What's a story you are dying to tell, but haven't found the correct question to it yet? When I was in high school, there was this service called ChaChab where you could text them any question you wanted, and 90% of the time they replied with an answer. One of the guys I knew, not that well, and a few of his buddies during lunch, decided to text with the question, what is the easiest way to destroy the White House, or something along those lines. Literally, within like an hour we had freaking secret service at our school. They pulled up in all black with glasses and an earpiece, just like the movies. They took the guy and his buddies away for a little while for questions and to make sure they weren't terrorists, probably gave them a very stern talking to then they returned to class and didn't want to talk about it. Good times. I saved a baby from being run over by a car in the avenue. I was very high at that moment when I saw the stroller with the baby slip off to the road everything went in some sort of low speed mode and I ran as fast as I could, jumped and grabbed the stroller just in time before the baby died. Worst part? When I took baby back to his slash her mom she gave this annoyed luck to me and just said oh I told my sister to take care for him while I was in phone and sister was also in phone. No one said thanks or seemed to even care about kiddo almost dying. I hope the baby is alright. I have this story of the high school name, Creeper. Back in high school I was in a group chat with several friends, maybe 15 in total. One of these friends was browsing slash b slash. At the time creepshit threads were a thing. Where degenerate goobers would take pictures of women's asses in public without em noticing. My friend was scrolling through when he saw a picture of a familiar environment. Our freaking school. Most of the picture was the environment with a girl and her ass a fair ways away, so the cameraman wouldn't get caught. This left a lot of open space which proved it was our school. Not only that, when he opened the thread he found a couple more from different areas around the school. So my friend has an idea, match the resolution of these pictures to a type of phone. Then see who has that type of phone, and also match it with people who are known to browse slash b slash. After another couple days, he found out it was a guy we all knew, but didn't really hang out with. The story kind of fizzles out, we couldn't prove anything, and my friend just told him I dunno if this was you, but if it was you should cut that creepy shit out. Don't be a freaking weirdo. But I'm still impressed about my friend's detective skills. When I was younger me and my friends used to play a game called Nicky Knocky 9 Doors, where you would knock on a door and run. We kept knocking on the same man's door for months. He was really fat bold and always angry. He used to chase us across the estate and every time you'd escape he would bring his car out and chase you in that. Fun times. The time I got chased through a woods by a drug dealer with my friends on the way home from school. The time I almost got hit by a bus three times in the same day while on my bike. The time I got chased by a flock of swans through a park. All three of these happened in the same year, so I don't know what to say other than it was one of the wildest years of my life tbh. When I was a kid, like 6 years old, my dad was an engineer who traveled to rural areas to make geological measurements, so he always said jokingly that when you need to pee and there's no bathroom around, you just find a good tree. So apparently I took that comment seriously, so I blame him for what happened. One day my father took me with him to an office where he had to do some business work, suit and tie, formal stuff, and I needed to pee. So I approached a little tree in the lobby. In retrospect, I suspect it was one of those fake trees. I pulled down my pants and I peed on it in front of everyone in the office. My dad was distracted, so he wasn't able to stop me until I was finished, but yeah I probably messed up his day. Also that day we were on the elevator, and a guy who also was wearing suit got off the elevator, and I though it was my dad, so I followed him, and my dad had to stop the elevator to get me, and I was actually embarrassed by that, not for showing my ass to the office while I peed on their plants, but because I followed a gut out the elevator. Kids minds work in weird ways. So this story happened when I was about 8. From memory I was in grade 3. It takes place in Perth, Australia there was this big Kiwi lad in our class and he was a bit of a bully. One day I was drinking at the water fountain and he's come along and tried to push me a bit. I told him to get lost. 
he keeps trying to push me off it. So we've ended up fighting, and I've flogged this kid. Humiliated him in front of everyone, he has a black eye. Anyway the next morning in class we are sitting on the floor in class, when this kiwi lady comes screaming into the class. Where's Deacon? The teacher points me out. This lady has grabbed me by the collar, dragged me to a wall, pinned me on it, and abused the hell out of me telling me never to touch her son again. So I tell my parents what happened, and they are pissed. They ring the principal the next day to say WTF and the principal say he has the other kid's parents with him, and why don't we sit down and talk? My father said keep them there. He goes down to the school and a huge brawl breaks out. While this is happening my grandfather is at home listening to his police scanner. One of Perth's biggest criminals is having his own brawl at Perth's casino. The riot squad have been called in. While they are on their way they get a message. The Maoris and the aboriginals are rioting at a primary school as our school is 5 minutes from the casino the riot squad got diverted to my school. So all these cops in tactical gear have rocked up to my school to deal with my parents and the other kids parents. Meanwhile the guy who was brawling at the casino got away. The postscript is that the lady actually took us to court, tried to sue us and get a restraining order. I'm caught her husband has decided to represent himself. He had shown up to court in full camouflage gear. During the court case the following exchange happened. Who? Maori kid's father. B. My father hit my wife with a hammer. Judge to my father. Is this true? My father. Yes your honor. Judge. Why? My father. She jumped on my back and was biting my shoulder. Judge. Where did the hammer come from? My father. I brought it along. Judge. Why? My father, because who is well known in our neighborhood for walking around with a huge bowie knife and flashing it at people. Judge, to who, is this correct? Who, yes your honor. Judge, did you bring the knife to the school? Who, yes your honor. Judge, do you have the knife on you now? Who, yes your honor. And he proceeded to pull this huge bowie knife out in the courtroom. The case was dismissed, the judge instead put the restraining order on them, and they were made to pay all court costs to art school, I accidentally left a 15 minute long voicemail of me singing for my soon to be headmaster. Were you accepted? They said soon to be. Safe to assume it went well. When I was a kid, like 5, my dad gave me his northeasts. He had Tetris. I turned it on and the first thing you see at the main menu is a Russian palace. Then blocks start falling. My child brain put two and two together and assumed that the point of the game was to use the blocks to build a castle. When your castle reaches the top, you win. And when a Rodus appears, that's the bad guys trying to destroy your castle. My dad would watch me build castles for hours and wouldn't say a damn thing. He just let me enjoy it, but I do remember him laughing a lot. When I got a little older, he finally told me how to actually play Tetris. And I immediately lost interest. I didn't rediscover Tetris until my teens, and I still think back to those early days, whenever I play a round of 99. I live in Alberta, Canada, and we had a really bad wildfire recently. It wasn't near enough to where I live for me to evacuate but one day I wake up, and the sky is filled with smoke. The sun looked like the eye of Sauron. The light filtering through the smoke made everything look like that screen softener you can put on your phone at maximum. My parents wouldn't let me or my siblings go to school because the air quality was horrendous. I saw someone walking to the bus stop wearing a full on gas mask. I had a fire less than a mile from me, about a mile away, in the UK. It was a pretty big fire and a couple of houses down the road for evacuated. The road I live on was closed for a month and it stank out everything for a good few weeks after. One day, the smoke was so bad, wind was blowing in our direction that we said frick it and went out for the day, taking our dogs with us. We could barely see 50 meters in front of us with how thick it was. A few years ago, I was a senior in college and was applying to law schools. The University of Oklahoma wanted to schedule a phone interview with me. The date that they picked was not just a Friday, but the Friday before Halloween weekend. My friends and I had a solid weekend of drinking planned. I was told to expect a phone call between noon and 4pm. 
The university also said that they may get behind and that if they didn't call by 5 o'clock the interview would be rescheduled for next Monday. Well, 5 o'clock rolls around with no phone call, so I start getting aggressively drunk while dressed as Abe Lincoln with my roommates. Then, at 6.30, my phone rings. I pick up. Hello. This is so and so with the University of Oklahoma School of Law. I'm sorry that we are calling so late. Are you available for that interview? Of course, my drunk ass agrees. Now, I had never in my life been to Oklahoma. My only knowledge of the state comes from the eponymous musical and the movie Twister. I talked about those two things quite a bit during the interview. I don't remember exactly what all I was asked or what I said, but they loved it. The next week, the same admissions person called back, told me I had been accepted and offered a substantial scholarship. I guess the moral of the story is that, when in doubt, drunkenly ramble about Twister. In my language, the word for swan sounds kinda similar to the phrase on water. When I was a kid, I misheard and for a few years thought the animals were literally called on waters. It made perfect sense to my little kid brain. I mean, they are on water. I even told people how smart it was to name them that, and no one ever corrected me until years later. So basically the equivalent is calling them swims in English. See also, flies. Have a nice day.